um, good evening. That's much better. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, if you can hear me clearly, just kindly just um, just probably just comment that you can hear me clearly. I've got a low battery because for some strange reason I forgot to charge my phone. I completely forgot that I was supposed to come on live at um, 8 o'clock um, GMT. So my phone hasn't got a lot of charge but if you can kindly um, just let me know if you can hear me clearly. Just by way of comment I'll be very grateful. All right, thanks, thanks, Howard. Appreciate it. So basically, um, I'll just give it a bit of a little, you know, little time. If you can just share this live video, so we can get um, a bit of more engagement. And um, what I want to talk about is just to give my own take with regards to everything that's going on um, within the UDP, um, most especially with the. Uh, with the, um, the issue of the flag bearership and the 2026 presidential elections. Um, a lot has been said, a lot is um, going on at the moment. And um, it seems really that there is a lot of um, seeming, um, you know, seemingly obvious um, division um, going on within the UDP and it looks from both um, within and outside, it does look like a ticking time bomb, just, you know, waiting, you know, for that point of, um, of explosion. So um, I thought I'll come on and just give my own take, my own perspective um, on what I see going on. I was going to write, like I always do, write an article on this but I decided hey you know what I haven't done a Facebook live for quite a while so let me just come on and you know have a conversation on Facebook and then I can give people a chance to call I don't know how I'm gonna do this um, the thing is my phone has got a low battery I'm thinking of taking my laptop switching on to my laptop or I want to turn my phone the other way around and then plug in the charger but I want you guys to just tell me when I turn the phone I'm gonna try that now if I turn my phone you know have it vertical if at all you would still hear me so it's gonna be an experiment I'm gonna to try to turn my phone and then see if I do it that way turn it on landscape and see if I could get my ch my phone plugged in to charge and I can continue but I don't know if it's going to be like what I sometimes come across when somebody's watching live and you have to turn your head that way to actually watch so I'm going to try it and see if it works so by way of your comment I should be able to tell whether it's working fine perfectly or I would have to switch to my laptop because I don't have enough charge on my phone and it's going to go off at some point I think I've got about 25%. So I'm just going to give that a try, yeah? And if you could just let me know by way of comment. Okay. So I'm going to turn it that way. And then I'm going to plug my phone in. So it's telling me my phone does not support rotation. That's what it's telling me. It's telling me rotate your device. You cannot, you can't turn your phone while live. So can you guys just comment and tell me if the live has stopped? or it has stalled or what's going on can you just let me know so i have to turn my head to read the comment can somebody just let me know is the live still on did it go off can you still see me are you seeing me sideways It, it keeps telling me rotate your device you can't turn your phone while on live video so yeah you guys are saying yeah 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 but what is yeah to what are you seeing me sideways do you have to turn your head to see me or 
Is it just okay? It's on, but am I sideways? Oh, I'm sideways. Okay, all right. <laughs> so which means I have to turn it again. But then the thing is, it won't. It won't charge. I can't. I can't charge it. Oh Lord, my camera is upside down. Okay, good. So it's back on okay now. But the thing is, though, I don't have a lot of charge on my phone. So I'll probably have to, when the battery is low, yeah, it was sideways. Okay, cool. Um, so when the battery is low, I would have to come back on. But let's get let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Um, so basically, um, this is just to add my own take to the whole conversation that's going on within the UDP, outside the UDP, um, UDP members, you know, some who are not UDP members and things like that. Okay, I'm turned sideways. Okay, so I've turned it back on now. So am I am I good now? Am I good now? Am I am I back on normal? Yeah. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm I'm gonna talk about the first thing I'm gonna the first thing I'm gonna talk about is um basically and sorry guys, if my phone goes off, I'm going to try to come back on and I'll use my laptop to go on live just in case because I don't have much charge on my phone. That's stupid on my part because I should have charged my phone, but I completely forgot that I said I was going to come on live today. So please excuse me. But if you can please share this live video, if you're on and you're watching, and if you don't mind, just share, share the live video. So, that, I mean, we can have a lot, you know, a lot of engagement. People can call in, people can contribute. We can hear what people have to say. Um, thanks, Bri. I appreciate it. Okay. So one, this is what I'm going to talk about. The first thing I want to talk about is just who we are as individuals in Gambia, who we are as Gambians. So I don't want to limit this to the UDP for now. I just want to talk, just let's, let's have a discussion as to who we are as a people, what are our value system, what we believe in. Do we, do we always practice what we preach? And do we believe in the very fundamentals of democracy as we talk about, as we preach about every day? So I'll start with um, the Sabali the Sabali issue, when Sabali decided that he was going to call it quits with the UDP and he was going to join the NPP. Now, I wrote an article on this. I engage a lot of people on this. Lamin, why not you start using your laptop now? <laughs> okay, you want me to use my laptop now rather than start and having to stop? Yeah, yeah. I just wish I could have something. I could just plug my phone and just continue with my phone. But when I plug my phone, I can't stand my um, my camera and my um, the the tripod got broken. So yeah, I need to get okay. Fine. So I'm confused. Some people are saying I should get on my laptop now before it cuts off, and then I have to start over again. I don't know what the consensus is. If whether I should do that or I should just carry on and should just go on until that time when I could see my batteries getting low and then we could see we could sort something out real quick. But um, let me let me see. Maybe I need to just get my laptop. Yeah, I'm just going to get my laptop um, ready and then. Um, Brah, yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to attempt to, 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 to talk about a bit. Yeah, maybe I should do that. Just talk a bit about what democracy is all about and um, just try to build, build a context from that and get some sort of a um, some sort of an understanding as to what this whole this whole business of you know everybody preaching democracy democracy yes and then doing something that is contrary and opposite to that so now this is my opinion and basically this is my opinion this is my belief that um most of the time we do not understand we don't have a historical perspective to the meaning um foundations and um 
involvement of, of what um, the principle of, of and school of thought of what um, you know democracy is all about. Now, what is democracy? What really is democracy? People talk about it all the time. People talk about oh, I am a democratic. What is a democratic? What is a democrat? What is a person who believes in democratic ideals? What are the ideals of democracy? I always say that democracy is, 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 um, is built, it is premised on a very enlightened populace. So it's a school of thought that you must understand. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, democracy is basically saying that every individual, irrespective of creed, irrespective of religion, irrespective, irrespective of cultural differences, political thought, political affiliation, status in society, they, they all have equal rights to their dignity, to their self, to progressive mechanisms to enjoy everything around them in an equitable manner. So re remember, I'm not saying equal manner. I'm not saying everything has to be equal. I'm saying everything has to be equitable. Now, somebody would ask me, I know, but I would text me and tell me, so what is equity? What is equitable? And what's the difference between something that's uh, between equity and equality. What's the difference between what is equitable and what is equal? I'll tell you what is equity and what is equal. I, well, I, I'll try to see if I can demonstrate that. Sorry, I just came from the store. I just got that. So I will try to um, just explain this. Yeah. So, so this is a, this is like a spray, um, a deodorant right here. Yeah. And this is some rubbish shower gel can you see the height difference this is the height difference yeah and let's say this is so this is this is basically I, I, I don't know if you can see me but this is basically heaven heaven yeah this is heaven so this is Mr. Mr. Laurel. This is Mr. Lynx shower gel. Now, they both want to get to heaven. They both want to get to heaven. In a democratic society, these two individuals have got equal rights to get to heaven. This is the bar. This is the aim, this is the goal, this is the objective. They want to get to heaven. Unfortunately, Mr. Link, Link right here, is born very short and does not have the, the privilege of height. So Mr. Laurel here, men expert, is very tall and he was born automatically privileged and and has an advantage over Mr. Ling to get to heaven. This is the goal. This is the goal. Now, equality, equality would say that heaven is right here. Equality says heaven is here. And Mr. Ling can get to heaven. Mr. Laurel Export can get to heaven. Equality will tell you they are both on a level surface, a level playing field. That is, that is equality. They're both equal. If you're getting me, can you just comment? So they're both equal. I'll take this off. I'll lift my laptop so you see what I'm talking about. They are both equal. Mr. Link and Mr. Laurel are on equal footing. That is equality. Equality. Now, the goal of Mr. Links and Mr. Laurel Expert is to get to heaven, which is right here. 
Again, equality, because heaven is there. It is at a level surface, a level playing field, the same height. So this is what equality is all about. Mr. Lynx and Mr. Laurel Expert are both on an equal footing. They are both trying to get to heaven, which is at an equal height from level, ground level, to wherever heaven is. That is equality. Now, democracy, as some people would understand, think it's all about equality. They think it's all about equality. So Modu and, and, and Abdullahi and Melville should all be equal, have equal advantages, have equal access to resources, to everything. This is the, con this is the confusion. That is what people think democracy and democratic ideals are all about. But no, democracy, real democracy is about equity. And now I'm going to explain what equity is. Now, this is heaven. Mr. Lynx is here on an equal footing with Mr. Laurel, but Mr. Lynx has got the disadvantage of height. Very short. Mr. Laurel is tall. So Mr. Laurel is nearer heaven. So for Mr. Lynx to get to heaven, Mr. Lynx would have to walk double, double, what Mr. Laurel would work to get him to reach heaven. So that is equality. Now, if you want to make it equitable, what you would do is, you would get, so you see this, it's a boost. I'm putting this here, and I'm going to raise Mr. Link's up. Mr. Link still cannot get to Mr. Laurel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give Mr. Lynx another boost. And then what happens is Mr. Link, Mr. Laurel are now on equal footing, different height. But Mr. Lynx here has been given a boost to get to the level of Mr. Lynx. And now when they both attempt to get to heaven, it's going to be an equal fight equal energy, equal resources to get to heaven. It's the best way I can understand, I can explain this logically. So can you, by way of comment, tell me if you're understanding what I'm doing or what I'm saying. So Mr. Lynx was here. He's taller. So for him to get to heaven, all he had to do is just do something like that and he gets to heaven. But Mr. Lynx, short, disadvantage from an underprivileged background, maybe does not have much opportunity as Mr. Lynx have, would have to walk twice to get to the level of Mr. Link before he can even attempt to get to heaven. The eventual goal. If you take that heaven away, you're saying objectives in life. So Mr. Link was not born in Fajara. Mr. Link, probably his father, was not a civil servant. Mr. Link um, probably did not have access to all the scholarships, to all the resources. But then Mr. Laurel here had everything already at his disposal. Now, you cannot say both of them have got equitable chances to get to their goal. So what you do is, to make it equitable, you got to lift Mr. Link or boost Mr. Link to get to that level. And then it becomes an equitable platform. It is not equal because Mr. Link's here it's not at the same footing of Mr. Laurel. But what you have done, you have created an equitable environment where both of them can enjoy the fruits of whatever it is and be able to reach their respective objective. So that is what equity is about. I hope I try to explain that in, in clear terms. So, now, if you look at what democracy is all about now i always tell people this in america there was a time when for you to vote for a person to vote for a person to be able to exercise their franchise their rights to vote you have to be an owner of a property you have to be a compound owner a yard owner 
And that is what gives you the right to be able to, to take part in discourse, to take part in issues of, 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 of national importance. And then it gradually evolved. So, so remember, this time, women were not allowed to vote in the United States. Women had no franchise whatsoever. It was the men that were allowed to vote. And it was not only all the men. It was the men that had ownership to property. That can prove that they have a property. Probably that's where the whole issue of taxation came about. And they could pay tax. They could pay rates. So they had a say in who governs them. They had a say in matters of national interest and national discourse. Then it evolved. So it was not only men that had compounds or men that own yards or well, call it property. They call them yard owners. It then evolved to every man in the states, in the United States, had a right to vote. But remember, it was only, it evolved. So first, it was the white man. It was only the white man that had the right to vote. And then it evolved to only the compound owners that had a right to vote. And then it evolved to, to, so when the compound owners came, then of course you had blacks and whites who owned compounds, who owned properties, they were allowed to vote. And then it gradually evolved that all men are allowed to vote and women were not allowed to vote. And that is why you had the civil rights movement, you have people like Rosa Parks and stuff, who were all fighting for equality, fighting for things to be done the right way, fighting against segregation, black and white. It evolved. But the point I'm trying to make is that in the moment, in the times when only men were allowed to vote, it was also seen as a democratic environment. That was their democracy. It was their style of democracy. It was democratic because it was accepted in the society at that point in time that only men could vote. The culture, the cultural dictates at this time, the societal norms at the time allowed for this particular trajectory. It allowed for... for for people to have a consensus and an understanding that only men are allowed to vote because men were seen to be superior than women in both intellect and, 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 and phys physical ability. And then, of course, because only the men were owning property. So when it came to status, to, 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 to affluency, to, to, to their, 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 um, how you call it, to, to, um, to, to wealth, it was the men that was like up there. So it was a democratic wall. It was democracy. But then it evolved eventually to include women. But then also it, start, it started with women who owned properties. They were allowed to vote. And then it evolved to both black and white being allowed to vote. And so if you see, the point I'm trying to make is, the democracy that we so preach, that we so embrace in Africa, is a principle that was built and patterned according to the culture of the Western world. What the Western world seen as, see as democracy is, is patterned according to what is accepted as culture. It is cultural norms. It is societal acceptance of a way of life. Now, what we have done in Africa is we have tried to embrace and copycat this democracy with everything, hook, line, and sinker, but then it does not flow well with our cultural norms, our societal values of who we are as an individual. So rather than us defining what is our own type of democracy we have embraced what the international world the western world has accepted as what democracy is all about and we have just just basically borrowed it just like you have in our laws most of our laws are colonial laws that are very that were some of them were very peculiar very unique to england to the colonialists but we accepted everything 
And so we have certain laws in our statute books that can never be implemented in Gambia because it doesn't exist, because we don't have the terrain. We don't have the things that can make that law applicable. So these laws are redundant because we embraced it from the white, from the white man. We embraced it from the Western powers, from the colonialists, from the colonial powers. We infused it into our laws, but it is redundant because we don't have it. It is not applicable. So when we practice democracy, we do not understand the tenets of what it is. We don't understand the ideals and we don't understand the concept behind this because we're trying to embrace a cultural norm that is not as, 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 as applicable to our cultural setting, our societal standing, and even our geographical um, um, surrounding. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to the issue about Sabali and based on my point of view and my opinion of what I saw. And I had a few discussions with other people and I said to them, listen, everybody all of a sudden feels that Sabali is the worst person on earth. And I'm talking to some faction, to some people that are of the UDP membership. So all of a sudden, Sabali is a bad man. All of a sudden, Sabali hasn't got any sort of integrity in him. All of a sudden, Sabali does not have credibility. All of a sudden, why on earth should Sabali say this and this and this and that and that? And now Sabali is deciding that I'm going to go join President Barrow when Sabali has said the most despicable things about President Barrow. So in our own judgment and in our own feeble understanding and in our minds, we believe that Sabali automatically has become a person of less character. We believe that Sabali is not fit for purpose. We believe that Sabali is, is not a man of integrity. It's not a man of his words. It's not a man that keeps to whatever he says. But then the logic for me is that, and I cannot seem to, to bring it to Tardem. I cannot seem to synchronize it. And that is 24 hours before, Sabali was your campaign manager, was our campaign manager, and he was the best person to ever hold that position. So 24 hours before Sabali made a political move, Sabali had integrity. Sabali had a perfect character. Sabali was a man of substance. Sabali was a, was a man that's got political clout. But all of a sudden, within 24 hours, he changed his political allegiance. And all of a sudden, all we see was a bad man. But then... But then we are fighting for a democratic society where people will have a right to association. People will have a right to choice. People will have a right to self-actualization. People will have a right to self-dignity. People will have a right to self-determination. This is what we are fighting for. But we cannot understand when an individual who was within our camp decides to break away and exercise those same fundamental rights that are premised on a democratic society. It does not add up. And what it does, it, 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 it puts the, the party at a very bad position because what it does, it makes it seem as if it is a party that propagates ideals in words. But when it comes to actionable things, it is the opposite. You cannot, you cannot, because that, that takes away, it takes, and I get it, I get it. I get it when people say, but we are hurt. When people say, but it's not nice. We did this for Sabali. We sacrificed that for Sabali. We did this for Sabali. But the bottom line is, the bottom line is, you're fighting to be in government. You're fighting to take over power because you are saying that you would be a democratic government. You are saying that you would be a democratic set of people. And the first fundamental principle of democracy is that a person has a right to make a choice. Just like Sabali made a choice. 
So just like Sabali made a choice and said that, you know what, I want to be part of the UDP. It is the same way that somebody who was with NPP, somebody who was with APRC, would be able to make the same choice, make the same decision, and come together and say, you know what, I have sat down. I have recalibrated my steps. I have looked at this differently, and I feel I can better fit in with my beliefs, my ideals, my ideology, my objective to align with the United Democratic Party. We welcome these individuals. We don't go back. We do not go back to look at these individuals and say, you know what? These individuals cannot be trusted because this person was saying that President Barrow was the best thing that ever happened on planet Earth. So why then, if we cannot say that to this individual that has decided that now, you know what, I'm coming to join the UDP. I'm coming to join the UDP. But that person cannot be seen as an unworthy person. You will never say that person, you will never say that person is dishonorable. You will never say that person hasn't got substance. And Abdul Aziz, Abdul Aziz, I just saw your comment. I mean, your comment is rather redundant because I'm not talking about what will make the news. That is obvious. That's common sense. That's logic. That's logic. If you have a person who has held the portfolio that Momodou Sabali held in the UDP and he decides to quit and join another party, yes, it will make headline news. You can't stop that. You can't stop that because it will make headline news. Obviously, people will talk about it. People would want to know why is he moving. That is what you call a political clout. That is the political clout that the person carries. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about what makes the news. What I'm talking about is the insults. The fact that you believe that somebody, because he's part of your party, he does not have a right to join another party. That is not democratic. I'm sorry. There's nothing you can explain to me. You can sell that to another person. But you cannot sell that to a person like me who's enlightened. A person who's, who has experience. Who's seeing beyond the borders of the Gambia. Who's seeing beyond the political party. Who's seeing beyond political party affiliation. What I am seeing is a group of individuals who cannot embrace diversity. A group of individuals who are prone, are prone to be dictatorial. That is what I see. Every single person that you see has a right to political affiliation. That is what is allowed for in our laws. So a person that decided I was going to work with the UDP, and that person decides, you know what, I don't want to work with the UDP again. Wish him well. Tell him, my brother, you have come to that part where you feel your objectives, your ideals, your values, no more aligned with your political affiliation. They no more aligned with your political interest. Go in peace. We pray for you. That is what democracy is about. But if you go all out to attack that person, to start to attack the credibility of that person simply because the person made a political choice. That tells me that when you come in power, when you take over government, you are going to be dictatorial because those are dictatorial tendencies. It is what it is. If you cannot accept the political movement of one member to another political party, but then every day that you go out and sell the UDP agenda, what you're trying to do is get other individuals who are part of, of another political party to come to your party. And you would not say that these people lack integrity. You cannot say this, people, this individual lacks in credit, um, 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 in integrity. You cannot say this person is not a person of substance. You cannot say that this person speaks on both ends of his mouth. No, because they're leaving another party that they swore allegiance to. They're coming to join your party. You welcome them. It is always in the news. 
that so, 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 and so person, a delegation has joined the United Democratic Party and we celebrate it. We don't, we don't attack the credibility of these individuals. We don't say, but this person was supporting President Barrow. This person was supporting Mama Kande. This person was supporting SFL. And now that they're saying they no longer want to support these individuals, they are now saying they believe in the UDP. When, when they were in those camps, when they were in the NPP camp, when they were in the, in the, in, in, in the Mama Kande camp, they were attacking the UDP. They were saying the UDP was not fit for purpose. They were saying the UDP cannot rule. They were saying that the UDP is a Mandinka party. They were saying that the UDP has got an old power who's leading them. But when they leave and they come and join the UDP, you don't go back and take all those things and use it against them and say, hey, you know what? You're not welcome here. You're not a man of character. You're not a man of integrity. You're not a man of substance. You talk on both ends of your mouth. You don't do that. You welcome them with open arms. You celebrate them. This is what you do. But when, when it's the other way around, and these individuals leave your party to join another party, you bash them. You say they don't have a right to do that. You say, why Savali? Why this particular person? You don't believe they have a right to self-determination. You don't believe they have a right to self-actualization. You don't believe they have a right to political affiliation. You curse them out. You bash them. You don't want to talk to them. You don't want to have anything to do, to do with them. Because they simply decided to realign their political, uh, um, their political um, 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 affiliation. That is not democracy. That is not democracy. Because you cannot, you cannot practice, you cannot, you cannot preach what you don't practice. Because it means, if you ever come into government, if you ever come into power, you're going to be a dictator. You're going to be a dictator. So we need, as individuals, to be able to, to respect the decisions of others. That is what democracy is about. Understanding where your right stops and another person's rights begins. Understanding where your belief stops and another person's belief starts. And you embrace it all and you walk together. But it, 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 it makes you look bad. It makes you look bad when you cannot be a person, you cannot be individuals that embrace. For me, for me, Gilbert, I'm sorry, I, you know, I, I don't know how much you know me, but I don't care who twists whatever I say. I speak my mind and that's it. As long as I don't insult someone, I don't say anything, I don't use any swear words, I don't care who twists my body. At the end of the day, anybody kind of, nobody's going to come and feed me, so I don't really care who twists whatever I say. But that's the fact. But you see, you see Seiko, Seiko, the point is, the point is, in politics, there will be attacks. You cannot take it away from them. And I'm referring to Seiko Jaita. I'm just reading that comment. In politics, there will be attacks. So you cannot ask me to say, when Sabali attacked Dr. Sise, what did I say? It is not my business for Sabali to attack Dr. Sise. That is Sabali's political point. Didn't Dr. Sise attack uh, um, President Barrow? Didn't Dr. Sisi say that President Barrow was a man of no intellectual pedigree? But, the, 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 but Dr. Sisi that said Barrow lacked intellectual pe pedigree is the person that is now answering yes sir and his excellency to President Barrow. To President Barrow. The person that he said had no intellectual or, or, or whatever pedigree it is. He is now under that man, serving at the pleasure of that man in his cabinet. That is what politics is about. And that is why democracy is premised on an enlightened nation. A nation that is matured enough to understand the ideals of democracy. Because democracy can be messy. Democracy can be messy. Because it is not everything that will favor you in a democratic society. It is not everything that a person does 
in a democratic society that would favor you. They are the things that would completely go against you and you will have to swallow it. You will have to accept it because that is what democracy is all about. So yes, you cannot take away the political attacks. You cannot take away the political attacks. That I'm sorry, but in our, in our neck of the woods, in the Gambia most especially, that is what politics is about. Politics is not about policies. Politics is not about, about, about what, what this person would do. No, politics is about poking holes. Poking holes into the credibility of your opponent. Political attacks is part of our politics. Sadly, that's what it is. There's no one that doesn't do it. We see our political leaders go against each other. They attack each other. 90% of the time, they don't talk about the policies. They don't talk about what's different about them. Sometimes what you want to hear is, what would you do differently when you come into office? You see, you see sometimes when I read comments like this, it makes me sad. And Seiko, you're saying, they've attacked us. So you, you think we're going to leave them like that. Politics is not about attacks. That's not what politics is about. That's not what politics is about. Yes, but integrity is very important in politics. But my friend, my friend, from, from Casamas to Niger, Niger to Rome, Rome to Paris, um, um, Paris to, to Helsinki, Helsinki to Brussels, Brussels to, to Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa to, to, to Islamabad, Islamabad to, 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 to Copenhagen. Politics is like that. People will switch political allegiance. For, for crying out loud, Boris Johnson sat in Theresa May's cabinet. Boris Johnson was the foreign secretary for Theresa May. What more? Boris Johnson was fueling the agenda of Theresa May. He represented Theresa May above, propagating the policies of Theresa May. What did Boris Johnson do? He turned around and said that Theresa May was the worst prime minister that UK ever had. And what did he do? He undermined Theresa May politically and became a prime minister. So can you say that Boris Johnson is a man that has got no integrity? Simply because he got to a point when his political allegiance, his political alliance deferred from his boss. See, this is what I was scared of because now he's telling me my battery is low. And the live is just going to go off, unfortunately. And that is why I wanted to get on my laptop all this while. So this is politics. This is what we see. It happens. It happens. You will see people that serve in somebody's government. Like, like Boris Johnson, for example. That's the most recent thing I can give you. Boris Johnson was all over the world selling the agenda of Theresa May. He came back, undermined Theresa May. Said Theresa May was the worst person ever. And what did he do? He took over rights from Theresa May and became prime minister. But nobody would say in England that Boris Johnson lacked integrity simply because he decided not to go with Theresa May. Boris Johnson, that sat in Theresa May's cabinet, worked for Theresa May, in Gambian standard, is worse than Sabali because Sabali never sat in Barros' cabinet. Or, 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 or in Lawyer Dabo's cabinet. You don't go and attack the person's credibility just because of political change. Attack them for other things, not because in one day he was perfect, a perfect gentleman, and the next day he moves to another party and you insult him. But then you want other people, you want other members to leave your own party, their own party and join your party. And you're not going to insult them. You're not going to tell them that they lack integrity. So the first thing that we need to do as a people, as a bloc, as a party, is to respect diversity. To respect the rights of individuals to association. 
to respect the rights of individuals to join whatever political party that they want to join. It is their God-given right. Just because you gave somebody money, just because you helped somebody financially, does not mean that that person has to worship and bow you, it bow before you eternally for the rest of his life. Because what it means, you are not giving that person money out of good conscience, out of good faith. You are giving them because you want them to dog a dog behind you for the rest of your life. Oh, I gave him this. I did that for the, for him. I sponsored him. I sent him money. So what? So what? Life is not all about money. Life is not all about what you gave somebody. Somebody did not come to your house and force you to give him money. And you cannot buy love. You cannot buy allegiance. This is what we need to understand and know. The days of those things are over. You're not going to buy political allegiance because people are smarter than that. But love has to be organic. It cannot be cosmetic. It has to be natural. It has to be pure. It has to be true. It has to be based on honesty, sincerity, and a genuine love. You don't buy a person's political allegiance because they will leave you. And all you can do is go around and say, I did this for him. I did that for him. I gave him a car. I gave him a bicycle. So what? So what? The truth is, if you are saying that the UDP is the best political party, the UDP wants to take over, the UDP wants to see themselves as a beacon of democracy in the Gambia and by extension in the sub-region in Africa, in the rest of the world, you need to see, people need to see you now, how you conduct yourself, how you accept political movements. How you embrace the right of other people to do whatever they want when it comes to political party affiliation. You don't wait till you get to office to tell me that you can show me how democratic you are. You show me now by the way you react to, to a person that leaves your camp. The way you celebrate another person that joins your camp. That is what democracy is about. I move on. The other part that I want to talk about is basically what is going on now. Talking about lawyer Dabo, I will start with the fact that lawyer Dabo is not a winning candidate. Lawyer Dabo is not a winning candidate. Now, it is very easy for people to go out there and say certain things. With no statistical data, no scientific basis, no quantitative or qualitative data of any sort. It is not based on any thesis, any research, but you just get up and say, Lawyer Dabo is not a winning candidate. Why? Because he's too old? Why? He's lost elections? And I see people say that, oh, but he lost so many elections. So because of that, he's not a winning candidate. So because of that, he cannot be the flag bearer of the United Democratic Party. And these are the same individuals that are talking about processes these are the same individuals that are that are that, that continually base their arguments on respect for fundamental laws, respect for rules, respect for regulations, respect for the rule of law and the fundamentals of democracy, human rights. But you just sit there and you want to install someone else. You see, I can understand the message. I can understand that within political parties there would be some sort of allegiance. There would be some sort of, of factions. You know, it, it happens everywhere. Even, even within the, the, the election of, of, of political party leadership, 
Some people will support Lawyer Dabo. Some people will support Yankuba Dabo. Some people will support Taliban Suda. It is their right, again, it is their God-given right to choose. However, what I'm seeing now, what I'm seeing, what is happening now, is these people, they're not doing, they're not doing anyone a favor. But most especially, they're not, doing the, they're not doing the United Democratic Party a favor. And for me, I don't do Gaduala business. I don't know anybody who knows me knows that. I don't do the whole Gaduala stuff. So if I don't want to talk about something, I will not talk about it. If I don't want to mention it, I won't mention it. But if I decide I'm going to talk about it, I am going to call names. I'm going to refer to individuals. I'm not going to insult them. I'm not going to disrespect them. But I will speak on the matter and I will say, this is who I'm talking about. And the person I'm talking about right now, squarely, is um, Eunice Haider. And um, this is a person who's my buddy. He's a person who we have common respect for. So I'm going to talk about, this, the, that, about his pronouncement. I feel that the first mistake that he is doing is trying to install Talib Ben Suda. No, you cannot do that. I campaigned for Talib Ben Suda during the mayoral election. In fact, I, I referred to him as a winning candidate. I referred to him as a presidential material. I said so. But the United Democratic Party is a party of laws, regulations, and processes. You cannot, Eunice, don't, does not have the God-given right to handpick a Talib Ben Suda and say that this is the only winning candidate of the United Democratic Party. That is a lie. Loludu Dega. That is not true. That is not true. The UDP has got very competent individuals that can become the flag bearer of the United Democratic Party if elected according to the processes, according to constitutional dictates that have been laid down within the party structure. If you do not agree to what has been what is in the constitution, you don't agree to what is the regulations, what is the rules. What you do is you go and renegotiate those rules within the party structure. You go and challenge them to, to renegotiate those rules. You cannot just come and say that Talib is the only candidate. It is disrespectful to people like Young Dabo who are working so hard in the Brikama Area Council. So hard. You cannot come out publicly and say, I am a democratic, uh, I am a, U I'm a united democratic party. I am exercising my rights to democracy. But then you want to install Talib Ben Suda as if Talib Ben Suda is, 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 is a king. As if you're going to install him because he's the only one that is fit for purpose in the united democratic party. That is, it, it is disrespectful. To individuals of credibility, individuals of substance, individuals who have shown leadership skills and potential within the party. Even if you feel that Talib has got a better chance, you go through the required process. Let Talib be elected in a manner that is consistent with the regulations, the rules, the laws that have been laid down by the UDP. Anything you do that is outside, that is dictatorial. And you have to show us what is special about Talib. If you put Talib on a ballot box, I will support Talib. I will vote for Talib. I will do everything. But until that time that Talib becomes the elected official of the United Democratic Party. Outside that, let Talib go according to democratic processes and vie for the position. What Eunice Haidara should be doing is to sell Talib as a winning candidate. You cannot attack the entire executive of the United Democratic Party and say they are a weak executive. What is weak about the UDP and what about the executive of the UDP? You cannot tell somebody like me that the executive is weak. You cannot tell somebody like me like, that Aji Amseka is weak because I have a historical uh, um, 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 knowledge 
of, 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 of things that these individuals have done that I'm sure Eunice you wouldn't have done in the Jame era. When these same people, when Aji Yamseka was leading the Kalama revolution in Gambia, I was right there Eunice, you were not there. You cannot call that woman weak. It is disrespectful. It is disregard for the party for you to say that the party has a weak executive. Because if you say the party has a weak executive, I can by extension say that a party with a weak executive is not fit for purpose for you to even propagate that Talib should represent that party. I don't want to be part of any party that's got a weak leadership, regardless if it's Talib or not. And the fact is, if you don't believe in the leadership of the party, you believe that the leadership of the party is weak, you believe that the leadership of the party is dysfunctional, then I would advocate that you would support that your, your, your candidate, that Talib, runs on an independent ticket or set his own political party. And that is the fact. That is the fact. You cannot call a party leadership weak. You cannot say the structures are weak. You cannot say that the party is, is not fit for purpose. You cannot say that the, the, the executive is so weak that they all bow down to lawyer Dabo, that they're all scared of lawyer Dabo. But then you want your party leader, you want your party candidate to represent that same party. It is illogical. It doesn't make sense. It defies logic for me. Why would you want Talib to, be, to associate himself with a dysfunctional party? Why would you want Talib to associate himself with a leadership that is weak, with an executive that is dysfunctional? Why would you want that? Why would you want that? This weak party is the party that led the Kalama revolution in Gambia. This weak political party is the party that transformed the Gambia to bring in what we have today. It is the weak political party. It is old men and women, whilst Eunice and other people sat down in their comfort zone. It was these individuals that were walking the streets of Gambia. It was these individuals that were putting their family and lives at risk. So you cannot call them weak. You cannot call them weak. Weakness is sitting behind the keyboard in the comfort of your home in the United Kingdom and calling another person in the Gambia walking the political terrain weak. I don't care what contribution any person does. I don't care the financial contribution. I don't care the intellectual contribution. I don't care what, what document you added your, your, your input to, your expertise to. But calling a party that sits under the toil, under the sun, under the burning sun, the burning heat of Gambia, navigating the political terrain up and down the country, Trying to turn party affiliation to turn to turn individual, turning those things into votes for your party, the party that you believe that your candidate should ride on into 2026, and you call them weak, you call them dysfunctional. It means you yourself, I'm sorry, but you're dysfunctional at some level. Because why would you want Talib to run under the ticket of a dysfunctional party? Why do you believe that Talib is a winning candidate running under the ticket of a party that has got a weak leadership? Why would you think that Talib would run under the UDP when they have a weak executive? Who wants to back a candidate that is being backed by a weak political party? If you believe that your candidate is a winning candidate, you believe that your candidate has everything that it takes, go and sell your candidate as an independent candidate and show us what your candidate has got. Show us the political base of your candidate. Show us the political clout of your candidate. Show us what your candidate is made of without the weak, dysfunctional and, and, and weak if, uh, um, 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 executive of the United Democratic Party. Talib is not better than Young Stabo. Talib is not better than other people in the UDP. What is it is that Talib has got a comparative advantage because Talib has gotten the opportunity to be elected into public office and Talib has been able to demonstrate his leadership skills. Talib has been able to demonstrate his skills as an administrator. Talib has been able to demonstrate his skills politically because he has a comparative advantage over other individuals. It does not mean that Talib is the best. 
If other individuals had the same opportunity, they had the same equitable chances that Talib had, and they were elected in the KMC, they were elected as mayor, they might have outperformed the performance of Talib. But you want, you, you, you tell the party it is weak, you tell the party it is dysfunctional, you tell the party that it is not fit for purpose, but yet still you want to install your candidate under that same party. That is dishonesty. It is dishonesty and it shows to my mind that you have an agenda. That you are not just supporting an individual but you are supporting your gain, you're supporting an interest behind that individual. Because if you're supporting in an organic way, then what you would do is to ensure that the dysfunctional party is brought to a functional state. But you cannot come out publicly and attack the same party under the guise of freedom of expression. Freedom of expression has got limitations. And you know that, Eunice, anywhere in the world. And I'll tell you guys something now. I don't know if this is a secret. I don't know if it's something I should say, but I'll tell you that one person I know in that UDP executive that is not a weak leader is Aji Amseka. I'm sure most of you must have heard the story. I've never been able to really sit down and have an accurate confirmation from Lawyer Dabo. But we were told that when Lawyer Dabo and the other executive members of the UDP were held in remand in prison, that Lawyer Dabo wanted Dr. Aisha Tuture to run as a flag bearer for the United Democratic Party. In fact, it is said that he wrote a letter from prison addressed to Ajiyam, who was deputizing, and asked that the UDP support and rally behind Dr. Aisha Tuture. But we are told that Aji Yamseka wrote back to her and said that over her dead body will the UDP back a candidate that is not from within the United Democratic Party. And that is how Adam Abaro was selected as the flag bearer. So Eunice, this is not a woman that bows down to lawyer Dabo. There's a vast difference between regard, reverence, respect, and fear. But I'll tell you what you're doing. Talib is a lovable man. Talib is a good man, at least from what I've seen. But the way you are going about it and wanting to force Talib on the political body is making people to, 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 to take a step backwards to think what is their mission what is the agenda boy if you want Talib to be elected sell Talib as a candidate do your canvassing so that when that time comes and the UDP decides to elect a leader Talib will shine Talib will shine that's what you do you don't attack the party and by and force you say you're going to install, I mean, come on, man. That's not going to work. It's not going to happen. And what you're doing, what you're doing is bringing division within the party. And I watched your live the last time. Most of the people commenting, in fact, I had a, I had a comment between myself and Keba Sise when he said that, oh, but the UDP revolves around lawyer Dabo. And I said, I responded and I said, Keba Sise, but the CA, Citizens Alliance, it revolves around Dr. Sise. When Dr. Sise changed his political allegiance and joined Baro, that is when you guys stopped criticizing Baro. 
That is when you guys saw and realized that butter was good and butter was fit for purpose because Dr. Cisse, who the party revolves around, decided to join allegiance with butter. And you responded. Keba responded and said, oh no, but, 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 um, 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 what's his name again? Um, I forgot. The other guy, uh, what's his name? Re, um, Rafi. He said, but Rafi is now the chair and Dr. Cisse is not there. And I said, yeah, ding, 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 ding. Isn't that common sense? Of course, Dr. Cisse has been given a cabinet position. Would he still be there? He wouldn't. So obviously you would have a Rafi there. But if, if Dr. Cisse was not given a cabinet appointment, would Dr. Cisse, would Rafi be there? No. And that's the fact. It revolves around one person. And I know this is a matter of fact. But the fact is, you are allowing for people for outsiders to further divide your party. And if you do this, I'm telling you, it would be detrimental to Talib. Talib needs, if elected, Talib needs a one functional united democratic party to get him into office. Talib does not have an inherent right to the presidency of the Gambia. Nobody has an inherent right to the presidency of the Gambia. It is a privileged position that Gambians will elect a leader that they feel can, 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 can better um, 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 help them progress as individuals. And now I'm going to move to Talib. I don't know if anybody is going to get him to watch this, but Talib, you have a role to play. And it is now that you must show and demonstrate leadership skills and show that you are a unifier. You need to stop these individuals and tell them that you believe in the democratic processes of the United Democratic Party. You cannot be silent anymore. You cannot sit back in your little corner and say, that's not me. Because if you do that, it seems as if you are enjoying it. And it seems you are going behind clandestinely and fueling this discord that is happening. You need to come out and you need to speak. You need to show that you are presidential material. You need to show that you've got leadership skills. And you need to show that you are a unifier. Because you need a united UDP to elect you into office. Do not follow the clout. Do not follow social media hype. It's not going to get you into office. What's going to get you into office is tangible, real votes. Where people believe in your leadership skills. Where people believe in your leadership acumen. Where people believe that you are not a divisive figure. You're not a figure that comes to divide people. That you're not a, 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 a figure that is biting and blowing. But you're a person that will speak your truth. That you're a person of character. You're a person of integrity, a man of substance, a person that can unify a party. Because if you cannot unify a party, you will not be able to unify the Gambia. You need to come out and the time is now. Because there are those times when your silence would mean consent. Your silence would mean that you are supporting the agenda for the division that you see within the party. You need to understand that you are not better than any other person in the UDP. You need to understand that leadership, the presidency of the Gambia, is not your inherent right. It is not your God-given birthright. It is something that you must demonstrate that you've got the acumen, you've got the skill, you've got the potential, and you've got, the, you've got what it takes, what is required to lead and usher a more progressive Gambia. Gambia is not only interested in changing the presidency anymore. They've done that with Jami. It's not about changing one person. It's about changing a system. You need to show that you are able to change the system. You need to show that you are able to turn the system around. You might be a loving man. You might be an amiable person. You might be a person of absolute and good character. But you need to demonstrate that you've got leadership skills, but more so that you are a unifying figure. You cannot sit idly by and be silent anymore.
You cannot. You cannot anymore. You cannot allow your, 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 your proponent, the people that are advocating for you, to divide the party, to castigate the party, to publicly shame the party, to refer the party to the party as a weak party, to refer to the party as dysfunctional, to refer to the executive as weak, and you want to tell people in another month, in another year or two, that they should rally behind you and support the United Democratic Party on the whose ticket you would be running. You cannot do that, because that would be wrong, and that would be false. And that would be dishonesty of the toilet order. Dishonesty of the toilet order. The UDP is not a weak party. And that is why it survived the, era, the Jame era. The UDP does not have weak leadership. It is people that are behind keyboards in the comforts of their homes that are weak. Because when it mattered most. You had the UDP out there. You had these individuals sacrificing their lives for country. For country. We don't have a monarchy in the, in the Gambia. Nobody is going to install Talib Ben Suda as a leader. Talib must be elected in a proper, decent, open, objective an honest way, according to party procedures, according to part to, to, to the constitution, constitutional dictates of the UDP. And then we will all rally behind that individual. If it be it Talib, be it Young Dabo, be it Lawyer Dabo, be it whoever the democratic processes have elected. And I don't believe in anything about these people are scared of, of Lawyer Dabo. I am not scared of Lawyer Dabo. I have written publicly when I felt that your lawyer Dabo made mistakes. I have said so. He did. Lawyer Dabo is not God, can never be God. But you cannot disrespect the leadership of the United Democratic Party in one breath and then say, oh, I have respect for lawyer Dabo. I'm sorry, you did not demonstrate that you had respect for lawyer Dabo. If you call a leadership, if you call a man weak, you don't respect him, Eunice. If you think people are scared of Lawyer Dabo, you have missed the plot. People do are not scared of Lawyer Dabo. Rather, people have reverence for him. People respect him. People have regard for him. But you cannot be a dictator, Eunice. You cannot be a dictator. You cannot install a person because you believe in that person. Whatever your interest is. I know, you know, you see, to some of us that look at things differently... I know you said, oh, Yanks is my friend. But that is what we call clawback. We call them clawback clauses in law. Because in one voice, you are, you are, you are propagating your agenda. But to make you look good, to make you as an objective person, to make it seem balanced, you're saying, oh, but, but, but Yanks is my friend. But the, 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 the honest truth is you have no business, you don't have any appetite. To see Youngs run for that same leadership position. And that is the truth. That is the absolute truth. And that is dictatorial. It means if you guys get into office, if you get into elected office, if you take the realms of government, the tendency of you becoming a dictator is very great. Because you do not want to respect the processes of the, uh, uh, of the United Democratic Party. You don't want to respect the laws that are in place. Yes, I know. I absolutely feel that the UDP needs to have a succession plan. I believe so. I believe the UDP has to have a succession plan. But that has to be done within the structures of the party. That has to be done within the structures of the party. You don't attack the party to bring in a succession plan. You don't attack the party. I mean, I don't understand this business that, oh, Talib is a winning candidate, Lawyer Dabo is a losing guy. What, what, what makes Talib a winning candidate and what makes Lawyer Dabo a losing candidate? What data do you have? What, what statistical data do you have? What analysis have you done? Do you have any data to back that? Nelson Mandela, he was, he, he was running for the leadership of the ANC 
for donkey years. He was in prison for 27 years, God damn it, 27 years. He came out. They didn't say he was obsolete. Nobody told him you've been in prison for 27 years. You don't know what's going on. He came out from prison and he headed the ANC party and he went for victory. Because the people believed in him. The people saw past his incarceration. So it is not about being old. It is not about how many elections you have lost. It is becoming, it is about being a truthful nation. Are we true to ourselves as individuals, as a country, and as a party? You cannot divide the United Democratic Party. This is a party that has gone through the very difficult terrain of Yahya Jam. And I'm not sure it is now, Eunice, that you would succeed. And I'm saying that if you want talent to stand the chance of, of clinching the ticket, the flag bearership of the UDP, you need to speak with respect, you need to speak with regard, and you need to have reverence for the UDP. And you cannot be you know, divisive, divisive, you cannot. You cannot. And if you keep saying the candidate, the candidate, it is not about the candidate, it is about the values that the UDP stand for. Because if people believe in the values of the UDP, people believe in the policies of the UDP, people believe in the advancement of the UDP, people believe that UDP will be a good government, a better government, it don't matter who they put as a candidate, even if they put a monkey as a candidate, as long as they believe that the UDP is progressive, they believe that the UDP has got progressive policies, they believe that the UDP is better for Gambia, they will vote in the UDP. Irrespective of who the UDP puts forward. Because it is not about the individual, it's about the party. Because if it is about the individual, then the individual does not need the party. Let Talib run without the UDP ticket and see what will happen. Then you would begin to understand that the UDP is a force to be reckoned with within the political terrain of the Gambia. But you need to understand. You need to understand that losing election does not make a person weak. Losing election does not make a person become less a presidential material. You have to understand the terrain, understand the dictates of what goes on in elections in Gambia, understand the mindset of the average Gambia. UDP has got a lot of work to do. You cannot win an election, UDP, by the urban votes. Bloody hell, my phone has gone off.